I, uh, I told Dr. Moody, told Dr. Moody earlier today, um, you know, I know the apostle tells us to preach the gospel in season and out of season, but this is kind of ridiculous out here today. You know, I mean, I've got cold feet, but it's mostly from the snow that's lodged itself in my shoe. So it's wonderful to be here with you all today. Um, I'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be his belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. The young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. And the weaning child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the, earth, cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. I want to tell you, um, I'm an associate minister right now, and so uh, associate minister is usually just a slightly better paid uh, youth minister, you know, who gets to preach more often, right? Some of you guys know about that. And um, so I, I do a lot with our youth at our church, and... Um, one thing I try to do is, you know, we try to get out in the community and we try to do things. Come from a church that's a fairly affluent church. And uh, we went to the uh, Lexington Rescue Mission there one afternoon to help serve lunch to the homeless of Lexington. And uh, it was the nice program. The, the homeless come in and instead of standing in a soup line, they are seated and you take a tray to them and the silverware is wrapped up with a a napkin and uh, you take the tray to them and bring a drink to them, ask them if they want lemonade or water or coffee and uh, it's, it's a little more dignified than some things and so we, we served for about an hour doing that and folks were coming in, you know, tired. Some of them kind of boisterous and outgoing, some of them kind of withdrawn, quiet, some of them knew each other, some of them knew the staff. But our youth were, were doing their job. They were taking the food out there and 45 minutes in, an hour in, the staff came to me and they said, okay, well, it's, it's your all's turn. Come on in here and get a plate. We've got plenty left. Go in and sit down with the folks. So I thought, well, that's a, that's a nice gesture. You know, you don't expect anything for doing this. And so I go in, I go get our youth. And they're all sitting in the hallway with their cell phones out, talking to folks at home. They got their Blackberries and their iPods, texting, playing games. I said, put that away, you know, or you think you are. I said, well, c come in here and let's get some food and go in here and sit down and eat. And they tell me, oh, oh, no, we, we couldn't do that. I said, what do you mean you, you couldn't do that? What do you mean? Oh, um, I'm not hungry. We're not, we're not hungry. We, we, we ate. Well, this is at a lock-in, so I know they hadn't eaten since breakfast. I fed them. So... And I don't think it's because they consciously thought they were better than the people there. It's that they felt like in, in, in some way they didn't want to take away from those people. They didn't want to give of themselves. They could give the food, their time, their energy, but they needed to retain a wall of separation whereby they were in control of the relationship. It's about control of the relationship. The people of Judah knew about control. They had strong monarchs. 
The people of Israel had been under the control of the Egyptian empire. They were afraid in this text the Assyrian empire would sweep in and control their land. Later, the Babylonians would control. The Greeks would control. The Romans would control. These empires would come and for hundreds of years they were under the control of foreign empires. Isaiah speaks this word of hope that one day the anointed of God would liberate his people. And you know, you think, the people of Judah, it's not that they had a problem with empire. It's they had a problem with someone else's empire. They wanted a piece of the empire pie. They wanted to be in control. And so for them, they were waiting for the anointed of God. They were waiting for the Messiah, the prince who would make peace, in their name on their behalf and would establish a kingdom like David had had, like Solomon had had, that they would have control. Well, they never saw that kind of king. There were good kings. Hezekiah was a good king and he is reflected, his character is reflected in this passage, but he doesn't fulfill this passage. Instead, the Christian tradition tells us that this passage is ultimately fulfilled in a child born in a manger who lived the life of a homeless man. And as yesterday was epiphany, we finished the Christmas season, now we start to look forward to Lent and to Easter. We celebrate the life, the death, and the resurrection of a man who had no status in this world, yet he preached about a kingdom Well, God, where is this kingdom? And you know, I was told as a child that this kingdom, this peaceable kingdom we read about in Isaiah, we're to wait for. That's what I was told as a child, is just wait. Just wait. And you know, you you hear the song, I'm the one who lay down with the lamb, about this kingdom to come. But Jesus says, the kingdom is at hand. And so this is the conflict we live in. This is the world that we live in as the church of Jesus Christ. A world between two advents. In a kingdom that's been inaugurated but has not yet been consummated. We believe that we are leading in a revolution. In a battle that's already been won. Waiting for our liberator. And so this is the kingdom that we create between ourselves, in our interactions with one another. Not, we don't seek to control to create this kingdom. We can't pass a law that creates this kingdom. We can't gain a political office and establish this kingdom. But we can establish a relationship and start the revolution between you and I. You look at the image here. The wolf will dwell with the lamb. The calf and the young lion will feed together. The cow and the bear shall graze on grass. It's an image here of reconciliation that reaches beyond the need to control and seeks relationship. 